Grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray Psalm 25, verses 1 to 8. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, and you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And teaches his way to the lowly. A reading from Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten our grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says Lord God. This proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you said, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? It is not your ways that are unfair. When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. And when the wicked turn away from me, from the wickedness they have committed, and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they have committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O oh, house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O oh, house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn away from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all transgressions that you have committed against me and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God in the highest <clears throat> and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we're afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later, he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. 
which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What is meant by the proverb, the parents have eaten sour grapes and children's teeth are set on edge? It refers to the sentiment that the sins of the fathers and the mothers will be visited upon the children. That what befalls people must be because they or someone related to them did something wrong. So they deserve the malady, the poverty, the exclusions. So that it's fair to say, pick yourself up by your own bootstraps, as was said in the Depression. Or AIDS is God's punishment, as was said so many times in the 1980s. But God says, says Ezekiel, that's not my way. That's your way. All lives are mine. I have no pleasure in the death of anyone. The Lord God says to all, Turn then and live. Turn to me. Get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. That's God's fairness. Treating all people exactly the same. The chosen are not a certain color, age, income, gender, religious affiliation, or from a particular national origin. The chosen are those who, in hearing the call of God, choose to respond in this openness to responding that's how you can get a new heart and a new spirit and what is this new heart and spirit we need to get from the collect for the day we will hear that god's power is in showing mercy we need to accept to let this god in and it's not only about showing mercy to others in what ways are we even hard on ourselves, judging ourselves as deserving of a dilemma or a bad time? What voices from the past still hound us? That voice that says, you're a quitter, or you're not man or woman enough. What fears paint you into a corner to this day? Whether those be fears regarding health, or your loneliness or aging. In all of this, God is asking to be let in. The call for a new heart and a new spirit is a promise that the love of God in Christ will reorient our relationship to ourselves, to God, and to each other. The promise is that God cares. And this caring of God through the activity of Christ is taught and rehearsed throughout the scriptures, the, the gospel and the epistles, how the actions of Christ make it possible for the church, for us, to care too. That encouragement, consolation, sharing, compassion, sympathy are all possible through the love of Christ. Christ who showed not selfish ambition, but humility and regard for others who did not exploit his relationship with God in hope of gain, but emptied himself. The cross showing us that the greatest love is that which gives self to the other. For Christ, this meant being obedient to the point of death. For us, it means giving of ourselves to the other, but not in expectation of what we'll get back. Yes, God enables us to will and work such love. But it's quite a challenge and often enough can be scary to love without holding on, without grabbing hold of the other. The lesson of the cross is all about loving with an open embrace. There's a collect available in morning prayer which talks about Jesus stretching out his arms of love upon the hardwood of the cross and offering himself in obedience to God's will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. 
Loving with Christ's open embrace means a kiss and a hug cannot be that kind of net in which you catch another person. That we are to live in recognition that all the people who come into and move out from our lives are gifts from God. The ones we love are not our property, not ours to keep. That can sound a bit heavy about love. So let's just take another look at the collect for the day, asking ourselves, what would appeal to me in this collect were I to be a young kid? And I'll just read the collect. Oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. It would seem to me that running and treasure stick out in that collect as something a child might wonder more about. As a child, what excited you? What got you running? Might it have been that summer afternoon, the streets are quiet, you're playing with your friends, and suddenly there's a distant sound that gets your attention. It filters through the trees, the yards, and around the corner. It's the approach of the ice cream man. Your play stops. Everyone darts up, runs home, asks for some money, makes a mad dash back to where they were as the truck turns the corner and everyone starts running towards it, calling out their choices, grabbing cones and pops. You can hear the mm and the owing of almost the kids eating the ice cream sounding like nursing infants. The truck pulls away. The music fades. Somewhere on another street, kids are running to obtain the promises that that music makes. Running to obtain God's promises. If we're open to God's music, God's love, we will run toward it when we hear it. And we will savor the gift we receive on each occasion. Every kid knows you can't own an ice cream cone any more than you can own love. You can only enjoy it. But that's everything. Because if you trust that God will come around again, that you'll hear the music playing and run to obtain God's promises of love, then you will be able to treasure the gifts as they come. The thing is, we adults know too much about losing treasure. As a sad result, we don't run to obtain promises. Disappointment and hurt smartened us up, we say. But God says, get a new heart and a new spirit. Open up and start running again. Amen. Pray now for the sick and suffering. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants. We pray especially today for baby Jude, now entering his eighth, uh, eighth week. We pray for Josephine Orlando. Um, we pray for Mark Gaeta and his family. Are there others? Lord, we ask that you give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray also for the departed. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and death and brought life and immortality to light. Grant that your servants, we pray especially for the retired teacher and the band leader from Long Island, recently killed in that terrible crash going to music camp uh, upstate. We pray for all the victims of gun violence. Are there others? Being raised with him may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory. Who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. As we pray the prayer for mission today, uh, under the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Freetown in West Africa. We pray for all the churches and clergy uh, on the Diocese of Long Island as well. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, 
but in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>